Welcome to the More Circle and More Coulomb Failure Envelope instruction video. In this video, you will learn the general principles behind the More Circle, the More Coulomb Failure Envelope, and you will see two calculation examples in which we will show you how to find the pole of a More Circle. First, we will start with a general introduction on the theory. We consider a point P in the loaded subsoil, like shown in the figure. The Mohr circle is a geometric representation of the 2D stress tensor in that point P. It's a very useful tool to determine the normal and shear stresses acting on different planes through point P, as well as to graphically represent the orientation of those planes. All stress conditions in a soil sample can be found on the Mohr circle, with their corresponding shear and effective or total stress. An example of the application of the Mohr circle would be the failure mechanism of a dike through the point P. We don't want the dike to fail after or during application of a load, so we have to determine the 2D stress tensor at point P. Comparing it to the ultimate shear strength properties of the soil, this can give us an indication of whether the dike is going to fail, and if we may need to add some reinforcements. We remember from the lectures on shear strength that each point on the Mohr circle corresponds to a shear and a normal stress acting on a specific plane through the soil. A point in the soil can be represented by the small rectangle as shown. A point on the Mohr circle represents the stress condition on a plane through this small rectangle. Different orientations of planes within a soil sample can be considered. This can be either on a plane that changes direction, as will be shown in the shear box test example, or planes with different orientations, as was visualized in the dike example before. For every newly oriented plane considered, the vertical, horizontal and shear stresses present are different. Within one soil sample, the stress state can always be represented by the same Mohr circle. This is because the major and the minor principal stresses do not change for one sample. The orientation of the plane considered can be graphically represented by drawing a line from the pole to their corresponding stress condition. The pole is shown here for a triaxial test, which will be treated more specifically later in this video. Any point on the circle represents a different stress condition. Two specific examples on how to use and find a pole are treated later in this video as well. Two special stress conditions exist, where the shear stresses equal zero. These are called the principal stresses, and the orientation of the planes on which these principal stresses act will be two orthogonal planes, shown here for a triaxial test. The largest stress is the major principal stress, sigma 1 and the smallest is the minor principal stress, sigma 3. These stresses are also the biggest and smallest normal stresses present in the material. They define the diameter of the Mohr circle and do not change for a specific example. Failure in a soil sample occurs when the difference between the principal stresses gets too large. Graphically, this can be described by the Mohr circles getting larger. The Mohr Coulomb failure envelope describes the boundary value of failure, since it describes the shear strength of a sample. Shear strength is the maximum shear stress that can be withstanded. Any stress condition that exceeds the shear strength of a soil will result in failure of the sample. Multiple samples of the same soil can be tested under different magnitudes of stress. The size of the circle is stress dependent meaning that the larger the mean stress, the stronger the sample and thus the larger the Mohr circle will be before failure is reached. Still, it counts that for every soil, the Mohr circles of differently tested samples cannot exceed the original soil's specific Mohr Coulomb failure envelope. The shear strength of a soil can be tested by finding the strength at more than one different stress levels. Example number one. The following example shows a drain triaxial test. During the test, the deviatoric loading, DF, is increased, while the cell pressure, P cell, 
acting around the sample in every direction remains constant. For a drain test, the pore water pressures can dissipate during the test, causing the pore pressure measurements to remain constant, in this case zero, throughout the loading phase. In this case, there is no difference between the Mohr circles drawn for total and effective stress. No shear is exerted, so the total vertical and horizontal stresses are equal to the major and the minor principal stresses respectively. Due to the triaxial compression that takes place, shear does occur on other surfaces. Note that the triaxial test can also be undrained, in which the case the pore pressures can build up. This leads to a difference between the more circles drawn for total and effective stresses. Two conventional consolidated drain tests were conducted on samples of similar dense sand. The tests were performed at cell pressures of 159 kPa and 300 kPa. The maximum deviator stress readings display 600 kPa and 1145 kPa respectively. From this data, the major and minor principal effective stresses can be obtained. Check for yourself whether you are able to transform the given cell pressures and the maximum deviator stresses into the major and minor principal stresses. To draw the Mohr circle, the radius and center should be calculated first. This can easily be done by using simple geometry as displayed on the formulas on the slides. To draw the Mohr Coulomb failure criterion, the tangent line to both circles can be drawn. Using this line, C dashed and phi dashed can be estimated graphically. It is also possible to estimate the parameters with the formulation of the Mohr Coulomb failure criterion. This goes as follows. C dash equals zero because of the intersection of the failure criterion with the origin. The failure stress is equal to 500 kPa and the shear stress is equal to 450 kPa. Phi dashed can now be determined as shown using a graphical solution with the arc tangent. The analytical formula on the bottom of the slide can also be used simultaneously to solve for phi dashed. In order to find the pole of the Mohr circle, first we need to check the direction of the principal stresses. The major principal stress in a triaxial test acts in a vertical direction, minor principal stress in the horizontal direction. Check the direction of the principal stresses and draw the planes on which the principal stress act in their corresponding stress points. This is perpendicular to the direction of the stress that is considered. The pole can be found by using the cross-section of the two lines. This means that for different tests and soils in the ground, the pole can be in different locations. Next, the plane of failure should be found. To do this, it is necessary to identify the point of failure based on the Mohr Coulomb failure criterion. This is where the failure envelope intersects the Mohr circle. The orientation of the failure plane can be found by connecting the pole and the point of failure. This is the angle to the known stress plane, i.e. sigma 1 in this case. The angle that is found is the same for different tests on the same soil, also for different magnitudes of stress. This is because the Mohr circle scales accordingly. Now we will continue to example number 2. The direct shear box is a simple apparatus of which the top half can move relative to the bottom half. During the test, different vertical stresses can be applied. The principal stresses are aligned with the vertical and the horizontal stresses at the start of the test, but they rotate during the test. The failure plane of the soil is fixed because of the box the soil is in. This plane is in the middle of the box as can be seen on the figures. The rest of the soil in the box doesn't move. A big difference when compared to the triaxial test is that here there is a fixed failure plane whereas for a triaxial test the failure plane isn't defined beforehand. 
On the basis of an example, we will explain how to draw a Mohr circle for the direct shear test and finally, how to define the planes at which the principal stress acts when failure occurs. Two direct shear tests were performed on samples of clayey silt. The tests were performed sufficiently slow to ensure drained conditions prevailed. The following results were obtained. Because we are dealing with clayey silt, the cohesion isn't equal to zero. To draw the Mohr Coulomb failure envelope, we need two more circles. First, we have to determine the stresses that act on the soil. Check for yourself whether you are able to transform the forces given on the previous slides into the normal and the shear stresses that cause failure. The right answers are given on this slide. Since the transformed measurements are given for fa the failure of two samples of the same material, the two points lie on the same failure envelope. Note that each point has its own Mohr circle. Each point can be directly plotted and one more Coulomb failure envelope connects them. Based on the previous measurements, we were already able to draw a more Coulomb failure envelope from which we can derive the parameters C dash and phi dash graphically. However, the found cohesion and internal friction angle are more accurate when the problem is solved numerically using the full more Coulomb failure criterion expression. This expression is defined as tau equals sigma dash times the tangent of phi plus c. With two equations and two unknowns, we can solve the problem. The set of equations, as shown on the slide, give an internal friction angle equal to 26 degrees and a cohesion of 23 kPa. Next, to draw the more circles, we first need to know the radius in the center. We know that the radius is orthogonal to the failure envelope and lies on the horizontal axis. With the known shear strength at failure and the known internal friction angle, the radius can be determined using a cosine. The radius is shown on the slides. The center of the circles can also be determined. With Pythagoras, you are able to determine the yellow part in the triangle. Together with the effective stress given at failure, this will lead you to the center of the Mohr circle. With the calculated radius and center, the Mohr circles can be drawn. To define the planes at which the principal stresses act when failure occurs, we first need to define the pole. As known, the pole can be used to identify the angle of the failure plane to the horizontal. The stress acts perpendicular on this defined plane. The Mohr Coulomb failure envelope intersects the Mohr circle at the failure stress. For a direct shear test, we know that the failure plane is horizontal, and this horizontal plane is perpendicular to the known orientation of the principle. In contrast to the triaxial test, we don't have a second known stress orientation. This means that we have two options for the pole the red dot or the yellow cross on the slide. For the right hand side, the cross has an orientation of stress failure equal to zero. This is correct because of the fixed horizontal failure plane for which the angle is also zero. For the left hand side, the red dot has an orientation of stress at a failure tangent to the Mohr circle. This tangent orientation can be made visible by looking at the angle that changes over the Mohr circle. When you draw a line from the red dot to sigma 3 and then move over the circle to the dot, the angle will change and come close to the tangent. This movement will be shown in the following slides. If we assume the pole is on the left hand side, the small red dot indicates the stress state at an angle to the known plane. As this moves closer to the pole, it verges on becoming a tangent to the Mohr circle. The failure plane cannot be equal to a tangent since it should be equal to the known plane, which is horizontal in this case. This shown option is therefore incorrect. 
Now the same will be done with the cross as the pole. As the pole moves past the red dot over the Mohr circle towards sigma 1, what can be seen is that the failure plane for the first time reaches an angle with the horizontal plane equal to 0, when the pole is in the location of the cross. Now the failure plane is horizontal. Because there is no other option for a failure plane in the direct shear test, this is the correct location for the pole. Next, when you draw a line from the correctly established pole to the principal stresses sigma 1 and sigma 3, you will find the planes where the principal stresses act perpendicular during failure. In the figure, these planes are shown by a striped red line. To find the orientation of the failure plane, the angle made with the horizontal should be established. And this angle is shown on the slide as theta 1. A short summary. Mohr circle can be seen as a representation of stress. The Mohr Coulomb failure envelope was used to show failure. The pole of the Mohr circle relates the orientation of all stress points to a known orientation. The examples of a triaxial test and a direct shear test were explained. We have reached the end of the video. Thank you for your attention. And on behalf of the Soil Mechanics Teaching Assistants, good luck with your studies.